Pacific Drums and Percussion presents Get It Started with Daru Jones and Daru's special guest Mike Mitchell and Jonathan Moffat. And now, live from the Five Spot in Nashville, let's get it started. That we have today. I'm very, very excited. You know what I'm saying? We got a, we got a, we got two amazing kings with two, two unique setups and um grateful to be here. So today I'm using my signature series kit PDP called the Dara Jones New Yorker, which y'all see it's a portable vibe, you know what I'm saying? Um and this venue, this is in Nashville in the five points area. And actually I would play here once a month for an event called Funky Good Time. It's basically the DJ drumming thing that I brought to the community, you know, when I moved here from New York. And it's, it's really cool to be back in this venue, you know what I'm saying, it's been a minute. I don't even, I can't even think of the last time I played here, but I'm glad to be back. Shout out to Todd, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and all of the five the five spot staff. Thank you for letting me, you know, use a venue. And um, just want to shout out to Brands, PDP DW, Signature Kit. I'm also a Pisces symbol artist. As you can see, I'm using one of my main, one of my main goodies. And it's going to be, you know, it's going to go along with the topic that we're talking about today. How do I find the right gear? You know what I'm saying? And this is a very good topic. You know, um, there's a lot of things out in the marketplace. Let me finish talking about the gear that I'm using. Something else that I'm using is um, a head drumsticks. And these are made out of aluminum. You know, it's, with a, it's, it's, it's through a company called Big Bang Distribution. And these are my signature model, DJNY. And it matched the drum kit. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 the gold sparkle with the black fade. Um, I'm also a Remo drum heads in Dorsey. So as y'all can see, what I'm using, I got my logo on, on these custom drum heads at the Ruzik Records. That's my company. Um, I'm a Latin percussions artist as well. I got a couple goodies. Tambo, cowbell. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it, but in the front, there's a microphone, like a sub microphone. And um, it's my motto by a company called Solomon Mics. And they basically make, you know, all the low end, they, they, it brings it out. And by this, by this bass drum being a small size 18, it's really great, you know, to, to give it an extra little lower frequency. So um, I think we covered everything. Um, so yeah, just want to talk about how do I find the right gear? That's a really that's a really good question. You know, I remember coming up when I started going to, you know, going to drum stores, um, the mom and pop drum stores that I got introduced to back in the days. And the more I started learning, because really when I started playing drums, I didn't even care about the gear. I started when I was four years old. So I just wanted to get on and bang it out. You know what I'm saying? Playing in church, you know what I'm saying? But um, eventually when I started, you know, being, cons being a consumer and getting my own things, you know, I, like I was, I had to get the right thing that's going to work with my body type. You know what I'm saying? Because we all built differently. And I remember coming up when I got exposed to all of the signature series, um, drum six, you know, some of, some of them, some of them were some of, some of my heroes. You know what I'm saying? I remember Dave Weckl had a stick. Um, 
Buddy, you know, Buddy Rich, they all had drumsticks, the people that I, I you know, that I was checking out back then. And it was, it was like, man, you know, like when you're a kid, you just want to do everything. You're super, you know, that, that like if Superman, Superman is like your hero, you want to go get a cape like him, you know what I'm saying? So I remember if I idolize a, a certain drummer, I want to get the same gear that they use, you know what I'm saying? But I, I didn't really know why they use that specific gear or the sticks that they had until later on. But just, I'm just going back to the beginning. Um, basically, I like the time. I'm, I'm thankful that I came up at the time that I did, you know what I'm saying? Because I came up when, you know, was no YouTube and you just forget, you know, the VHS tapes and, and the DVDs and you can idolize after you the person you like. And then you can go right to the store. And um, just want to talk about like the mom and pop sh shops. That was very, 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 very um, important, you know, for me back in the days because, you know, you have your mainstream shops, which they have nowadays. I, I won't mention any names, but like I feel like the, the, the mom and pop sh shops, they had the stuff that you would see when you would see in the magazines. Or you would see, like, if you went to Nam, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I wasn't going to Nam back then. I didn't even know about that. But they, they had all the exclusive stuff, you know what I'm saying? So I just I remember, like I said, when I when I saw that some of my heroes, they had this signature stick, I had I, I tried all of them out. You know, I didn't just be like, okay, I like Vinny. I'm just going to use this stick. I, I, I Basically, because I was, I, was, I was short and I was thin, you know what I'm saying? So I wanted to get the stick that worked with my body type, you know, because I don't want to be fighting myself. And I think that's very important when you're looking for the gear. It's the finest, the find the, the gear that works with, with, for sticks. The sticks that work with your body type. Because if you if you're playing and the stick is, is too fat, um, you're gonna you're gonna be working too hard. You know what I'm saying? I remember I think 5B was like the standard, you know, size back in the days. And I came up playing in church, you know, and it, it was not gospel chops back then, it was all about playing pocket. And we just wanted sticks that was gonna last a long time because I came up Pentecostal, which is that's the my my you know, my background as far as religion. Um, and we we had church a lot of nights of the week, and they would have they would have this music that they call it worship music, and it was like very fast, you know, it was they call it shout music, and you we would be playing that music for a long time. It was like dance music, people would be worship, and it wasn't not it was not like playing like a five minute song and it was over. Like sometimes the worship with the church that I came up in, our worship music used, would go for like twenty plus minutes. So we needed to get a stick that was going to last, you know what I'm saying? And we playing at full dB. So we're talking about like, like shouting music. It was like. At full volume, you know what I'm saying? And you know, we still, all you, all you can see is wood chips everywhere. So we just, we just shoot sticks. <laughs> but uh, it was crazy because um, sometimes when you would get tired, the next, the next drummer would be waiting on you just you know to be you know to come you know relieve you but anyway it was just very important to have the right sticks otherwise you playing at 10 db you hit that crash and, and the stick is, is falling apart and you don't want that you don't want that so i would just say for drummers when you go to the drum stores look at all the different sticks and just go through them and test them all and see what works with, with your body type moving forward um we're going to talk about the drum heads now as y'all can see my tune is a little bit differently um I want to say my tuning is kind of like a tribute to like Clyde Stubblefield and Jabo, you know, from James Brown. They played with James Brown and they had a certain tone. Also, you know, what gave me my sound is adding a little trinkets, you know, like sometimes I would add like a like a little tambourine vibe, you know what I'm saying, to give it a different sound. So as you can see, the, the, the difference. A lot more hollow. So, you know, depends on where you are in your career. You like, you know, coming to church, there was that church sound, you know what I'm saying? More of a tight fitting, playing pocket style. And then when I started advancing, I started playing jazz. Then I would learn about dynamics, you know what I'm saying? And like, man, and then I started seeing drummers. Because I think when I came up in church, everybody was using like the coded, the coded head. So that was like a thing. And um, when I got introduced to the fusion jazz and I started seeing like, the Buddy Rich Memorial Series, where they would have like, like Volume Two, they had Steve Gadd, Dave Ruckman, Vinnie Calayula. They all had Vinnie Calayula, which is a good friend of mine. Um, they all had different heads, and it was like, man, I, I had no idea that the sounds that they were getting it was because of the heads that they were using, you know. So eventually, when I started, you know, my mom, she is an organ player, and both of my both of my parents they played, they were musicians, and I'll never forget at when they would have concerts. They always made sure the drums were at top notch, so that we would go to the drum store, get new heads, and I, 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 it was cool because 
at a certain age, I started becoming like the guy, like one of the guys that would, would replace the drum heads. And I was like, man, it, it was cool seeing Vinny and those guys have the black, the different, the different hair. So I was like, okay, this is my perfect time to get to try something new. And then I remember the, the pinstripes becoming a popular, you know, drum head. So that's another thing to do as well. Like when you go to stores, I'm not sure if you can do that, but when you go to the stores, they do have different hair set on various kits. Just go hit top on them and just see what type of sound you're looking for. Because like playing in a live setting versus even in the studio setting, those are two different sounds and you want to be able to get the right hairs to work for those jobs. You know what I'm saying? There's all type of ways you can doctor it up. Of course, people, they use their wallets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, when you, this is like a, like a classic trick. You kind of take all the overtones out. Kind of tighten it up a little bit. So it's all type of things you can do, but right now I'm using a clear head and, 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 and the tone is very different. Like if I had a, a um, if I had like a um, pinstripe or even a coated, it's just a different sound. And um, to each his own, just depending on what you're playing. But this is what I'm going for. So I just, I just definitely recommend drummers just to be creative. You know what I'm saying? There's so many different combinations you can do. You know what I'm saying? This, this show is all about, you know, encouraging people to find your own identity. You know what I'm saying? And, and I always, one of the things that I was fascinated, like when I got the Modern Drummer magazines, was them profiling the drummer, also their drum kit. That was their identity. You know what I'm saying? So I remember, remember Vinny had the China to the left. That was his thing. You know, like an, um, Jack DeJanet, he was using the black, you know, the black hair. So, and then Terry Bozio. But I just, when I started getting drum heads and experimenting, I could see the difference that those different kind of heads made when you, you know, when you, when you switched it up. So I just recommend drummers when you go to your, your next store. Even if you have your hero that you admire, you want to get go and, and get everything that they get. That's cool, but experiment, switch it up. You know what I'm saying? So moving forward, symbols. Symbols are like one of the most important things in life. <laughs> That's your sound, you know what I'm saying? Um, depending on the genre that you're playing, I know when, when we, <coughs> pardon me, when we came up, there was a lot of other brands going around like that was in churches and that worked, you know, for that setting. But um, as I'm, 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 I'm currently a Pisces symbol in Dorsey. So, Within my career, I've been playing for over 20 years, so I got a chance to, 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 you know, to check out all the different brands, and they all sound different. You know, you never know what's going to work for your setting, but just be mindful. You know what I'm saying? If you're playing rock and roll, obviously you're going to be playing at a louder DB, so you're going to want something that's going to sustain and last longer. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to be playing at high volume, and you, you don't want your sticks crack. I mean, your cymbals cracking. That's going to be a bad look, and you might, you might lose the gig. You know what I'm saying? So picking a cymbal is just like picking clothes. You know what I'm saying? It's like an, it's an accessory, but just figure out what type of sound that that first figure out the genre that you're playing. You know what I'm saying? And figure out what symbols are going to work for that setting. That's half the battle. And then, you know, just when you go to the stores, just test them out. Um, what else? Percuss percussions is, is really important, too. If you want to add that to your drum kit. Some people, they don't they don't have percussions on their kit. They may have a, a percussionist playing with them, which is great, too. But if you decide to add percussions, there's a lot of cool things you can get. Um, I personally, when I'm playing, I feel like I'm I'm playing the drums as a percussionist and a drummer at the same time. So that's why I added these these toys. I got the tambourine right here. So if I want to, you know, add that effect without having another body, you know, and that way I can make a little bit more extra money because they don't have to pay the percussionist. I can just have that that toy right there. That's basically the vibe. I just wanted to be able to, to be two people at one time. So that's why I added those percussions. Um, there's all types of things you can get. You can get the shakers. Another thing, too, that I like to do sometimes, you might be playing a song and um, you're trying to build it up. And you just, you can be, you can play the tamarine, you know what I'm saying? Just with the kick drum. Then you make it an impression. They're like, man, this guy can play the kit and because at the same time. You might get another gig from that. So yeah, so experiment. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to do, you know, you don't have to do this, but 
it's all type of things that you can do to 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 expand, you know, your sound and make it bigger. Um, I don't have any shakers, but the shakers are cool too to use as an effect. Um, let me see what else. What else? And we're gonna bring up our, our first guest, which I'm very excited for y'all to see because he has a unique setup. Um, I think that's a, oh yeah, the, mic, the microphones. Microphones are very important. Um, if you you know for the nerds out there, you know there's a reason why they make certain microphones to go on certain things because of however the mic was built. You know it, it's able to withstand that frequency. Um, I want to I want to touch on the microphone that I'm using on the kick drum because my kick drum is a, a size 18. It's a smaller size and it's a little it's a little bit more hollow. Depends on the tuning because this this drum kit is very versatile. You know what I'm saying? But the the, the sub mic that I have on on the kick drum, I'm going to point at it so you guys can see it. It's made by a company called Solomon Mics out of Indianapolis, and this is my signature model, um, the Neo Black. And this microphone brings out all the low end frequencies, so you can use it for anything with with bottom. So I'm 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 I'm, I'm going to play it really light, and so you guys can hear the difference. So that microphone is is, is 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 really enhancing the sound. It's bringing, it's, it's filling it up, making it more fuller. So yeah, mic mics are very important to your sound. I remember um, watching Dave Buckle back in the days, you know, when he when he went solo and he had the two racks, huge rack mounts. And I'm like, man, when you hit on records, you're like, how did he get that sound? His sound sounds like it sounded like, like electronic pads combined with like an acoustic kit. But you know. All the microphones that he used and all the racks gave him that sound. So it's very important, you know, when you're picking your gear, there's a lot of companies out there, you know, you can check out Sweetwater, you know, they have, and they have videos. Y'all have the pleasure of getting videos where y'all can see the stuff. See, we didn't have that coming up. We had to just go to the store and hope for the best. <laughs> and if it wasn't the gear that we wanted, you know, then we had to, hopefully we get, we can get a refund or, or exchange. But yeah, there's all kinds of ways you can go on, on YouTube and, and, and Look out the microphones and see how they sound before you get them. Um, yep. So all these things help make your sound. The sticks, heads, cymbals, and the, the most important thing is you. You give, you know, that's you, you, the person that's narrating all these tools, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you can have you can make anything sound good if, if you're a pro, you know what I'm saying? If you know how to because some sometimes, even in my career, I, I may not always be able to have my, my kit. Sometimes I may have to adapt and, and, and it's good that if you can go into a setting and, and if, if you're not able to have your own stuff and make it work. And that's that's what I had to learn how to make whenever whatever situ situation that I'm in, regardless of if it's my own, finding out how I can make it you know comfortable for me. And that's very important. So we want to bring up our first guest is a good friend of mine, one of my favorite drummers. You know, what I'm saying he's the now, you know, what I'm saying a good friend of mine, Mike Mitchell. Ladies and gentlemen. Black Dynamite. What it do, bro? Hey, 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 what's up, what's up? I'm good, man. Thanks for coming on the show today, brother. Thank you for having me on here, Mr. Jones. <laughs> how you How you feeling? I'm good. I'm out here in uh, Boca, Tyrone right now, uh, Florida, getting ready for a show with some of my friends, Brad Miller and Patrick Bartley and Big Yuki and Jari Stampley for a gig we're doing out here tomorrow. Wow. And then, uh, yeah. Turning up a little bit, trying to stay out the way of this virus. Oh yeah, I feel you on that. I feel yeah. you on that. But we're thankful to have you here today, brother. You're one of my favorite drummers. Very innovative, you know what I'm saying? Very innovative. And I just, you know, I love your setup, just your approach. I'm always, I'm all, I always get excited when I see somebody that's pushing the envelope. You know what I'm saying? Because as you know, you know, in our industry, it can be very cookie cutter. People, everybody's kind of seeing what works for that person, and they just want to feel like it's going to work for them. You know what I'm yeah. saying, but I like the guys that you know would go within, go deep within side, and figure out how can I come up with my own sound. And you definitely have done that. And yeah, you, you want to give them some of your background before we talk about gear. Or some of your background. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm from Texas. I'm from Fort Worth, um, and I was raised in the church uh, environment. My mom's dad was a pastor. My father's dad was a bishop, so like I had a lot of that influence early on. And my dad was a drummer, or is a drummer. Uh, played like a lot of R&B, a lot of uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire type type stuff. And then my mom, my mom is a singer, 
and then my dad had a had a gospel group back in the day. So, so like that was my first experience, kind of playing with people at a, at a young age. Between that and and then being in church, and then um, you know, like when I was like fourteen, I moved to Dallas, like closer closer to, to to Dallas downtown, to go to Booker T. Washington Performing Arts High School, um, where like Roy Hargrove went there, Nora Jones went there, Eric Badu went there, Sean Martin went there. So gang split went there like it's a gang, a gang, gang. Aaron Young Coleman, boys. the spin doctor. Um, it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of people that, that are from that school. Um, and then while I was while I was at Booker T, I was you know playing and doing a lot of a lot of programs with the Monk Institute and the uh, you know different Brubeck Institute and the Vail Jazz Workshop and stuff like that. And then when I was like sixteen, I started going out on tour with. You know Chrisette Michelle, Chrisette Michelle. Yes, yes. What? That, was, that was my first gig when I was uh, when I was in school, and then um, I did that for a couple of years, or maybe yeah, like a year or so, and then I started playing with Stanley. Um, I was like maybe seventeen, before I did that for a few years, and then I started playing with um, Erica Badu, off and on for some. Schools. I, 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 uh, I got to stop you, bro. Stanley Clark at seventeen. That's just so bugged out, like. Yeah, it was. That, it was yeah, I, I thought it was a, just a big joke. Like everything was just a big dream, like something that wasn't actually happening, but it was all it ended up happening. That's amazing. Yeah. So, obviously, Mike, I'm glad that we have him on the show, but he's not able to be in front of his kid. But when you get a chance, check out brother Black Dynamite's rig. His his rig is serious. And, yeah. and what I like about Mike too, he got the L double pedal joints, which you don't really see, you know what I'm saying, nowadays. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to talk about some of the gear? Some of the gear? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I play DW. I play DW drums. Okay. Um, Zildjian cymbals. I play Big First Sticks. I play Remo uh, drum heads. And the only thing that actually stays consistent with my setup is my drumstick, because it's a stick that I designed with, with Vic. But my gear is very dependent on like the environment that i'm walking into mm -hmm. like um like sometimes i will like like you said i will play like a double pedal play like two bass drums sometimes i'll play three bass drums um you know, five racks four four times three you can snare drum cymbals all over the place or sometimes i'll do like a straight you know like four or five piece bebop kit with you know just three cymbals a rice cymbal two crashes and a high because that's like that's kind of home for me Cause that's how mm. I grew up practicing. So like having, you know, the the range for of motion that could go from like a, you know four piece, three piece kit, all the way to a twelve piece kit, you know, it's it's very dependent on the the musical environment that I think I'm walking into. Like I think tomorrow maybe I'm going to be playing like a five or six piece drum set with you know maybe six cymbals, five cymbals, which is mm. cool. Cause that you know that's the the more the more I have to like figure out what to do with the drums the more creative i end up being with what i do with what's in front of me so mm -hmm. I, I i try not to be so so such a stickler with, with gear as much as i possibly can you know depending on the situation but try to be as like just even killed and whatever about it because if i have an inconvenience with my with my instrument you know with the gear that's there it'll cause me to like bring out another piece or a side of me that i, I maybe normally wouldn't have to access if i normally have all my stuff with me, all my, all my, my normal gear with me. Yeah, I, I, that, that's a good point. That's what I, that's what I spoke about a second ago. Like being able to adapt into your environment because sometimes you, like when you're going on tours, they don't always have in the background. They may not always have your gear. But what do yeah. you want to do? Are you going to say I don't want to play the gear because they don't have? Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so. Sometimes they fully bring, just bring the wrong gear in general. Bring like I've had a few instances where I was doing gigs. And they just they brought me somebody else's rider, and somebody else had my rider. And so like I was sitting up looking at a at a three piece drum set that should have been like ten pieces, and I'm sure the dude that got my kit was like, I mean, I'm sure he got his three pieces out of that. I'm sure. <laughs> Christmas, Christmas time, Christmas. Yeah. yeah, but I mean that's cool to me because I mean I because of the range of drummers that I appreciate like. I appreciate you know Dennis and and Billy Cobham and and Tony Williams, but I also appreciate you know like cats that play you know three piece you know Mark Giuliano plays three piece drum set. You play a four, you know Chris Day plays like a five a five four piece sometimes. You know, like you know just having a range of 
of drummers and musicians around you that you like appreciate for different reasons. For me personally, it gives me more of a of a dynamic range of things that I can listen to and things that I can play and things that I can pull out based on you know things that I've seen and people that I've seen taking notes from like y'all. You know? Man, thank you, brother. So I'm like I remember coming up in church, like I was saying earlier, like everybody was using like the five beat. That was like the standard stick. Was that the same for you coming up in church? The, the Definitely not, man. I was my hand was <laughs> so much smaller. <laughs> I, playing, I grew up playing like seven A, like a seven A most of the time. Wow, wow. Kid. Yeah, me. Uh, I mean, right now this is the I'm. I'll be twenty six in a few days, and now I'm like the he the heaviest stick that I even play right now is my stick, which is basically like a five A, like wow. a five A. Wow. Uh, so, so within your career, because you've done a lot, you do, you've done a lot, and you've played with some of the best early. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all check, go check, go go check this brother out. He's 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 next. He's our he's our now generation. But like where your where your head is at? When did you start making um, those decisions on developing your own sound and, and and your choice on changing? Because like when we go to church, we're doing what kind of what everybody else is doing because we're younger. Just, they like they they have a certain thing in place, but like when did you when did you start like being like okay well I need to go I need to figure out what's gonna work for me. Um, I mean, gear gear wise gear wise. Yeah yeah um, well it's kind of a weird it's a weird a weird mix like it's me being from where I'm from and me being raised in the environment that I was raised in like mm -hmm. you know me being, being from Texas being from a squad or drummers where all of us like would kick it together. Mm -hmm. A lot of time, like me and this dude, Cleon Edwards, mm -hmm. uh, Marcus Jones, and Cedric Moore, and Teron Lockett, and uh, Demetrius, Demetri Henderson, D. I Henderson. I forgot Teron was from down there. I love Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Teron's from Dallas. Homie. Uh, you know, all of us, little Chris, all of us would, would play in the shed together at an early age. When I was, you know, they were in their 20s. I was, you know, in my teens. And a lot of times, at that, at that time, this was before a lot of us started doing hella gigs with people. We were sharing gear so like you know like we would just and we would just make that work for all of us like one night cleon needs to use my some of my stuff and one night i need to use some of marcus's stuff mm. and like you know i'd have a a cb 700 bass drum <laughs> with a, with a, pin and a Tama 12 and a yamaha four time and a, and a and a ludwig snare drum and all mixed match crack cymbals and, and heads that should have been changed Years ago, <laughs> mad but, perpetrating with the with the kids and just mixing it all up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, that mindset and that mentality mm -hmm. grew into me like never, never being phased about like what's in front of me. Like basically just being able to manipulate the gear that I have in front of me to like whatever situation that I need to. Like if I have smaller drums, maybe I tune them extremely high, so like they may have the effect more so of a timbali versus a tom that way i can play more percussive you know and then sometimes um if i have weird si odd size times i may like detune everything and where all the times are mad flat where like basically the amount of volume that i put into the drum is the amount that's going to come out or like dampening the snare drum putting a wallet on the snare drum or putting tape a bunch of tape on the drums or or whatever you whatever you need to do uh to get a so, but that that just translates to like when I started being able to choose the gear that I have, I wanted to have drums that are like pretty transparent and pretty easy for me to 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 just play play through. You know, something that doesn't cause me to like overplay or underplay because the the drum gives too much or doesn't do enough. I like started figuring out like how hard do I play and like what's my dynamic range of like yes. how soft will I get, how hard will I play, how like. Do I like custom things? Do I like, you know, things that are more cookie cutter? And so I ended up floating to DW because they have such a wide a wide range of drums that you choose from and a lot of different design, you know, different design figurines that you can that you can go for. Um, and the same thing with my cymbals. Like I've been I've been playing, I was born playing Zildjian cymbals. My dad is a drummer, like I said. So he had, you know, all a custom K's all uh, back in the day. That was the first thing I saw. <laughs> and then when he when I started getting my own gear, he gave I got some uh my mom and dad got me some CBTs. Which is which is 
for, it's for everybody going through that phase. But like, that's just the closest thing <laughs> that, uh, so you, you know, that I resonate with. I, I'm really familiar with that. I've been playing Remo since I was a little kid. I, I, I know those heads really, really well. And then, uh, and my stick, the stick that I made with Vic is like a, it's basically a 5A. It's a signature model. It's, it's basically like a 5A grip with no lacquer because I sweat a lot when I'm playing because I play so many mm. dog sometimes. Um, but it's a, it's a raw, no no lacquer on the stick, and it's an, a, a barrel nylon tip. But the nylon, it's, it has a coat of black on it. So it's like brighter than a wood tip, but it's not as bright as a white nylon tip. It's like a little bit, uh, a little bit more definition, but like not so like so much high end on the, on the, on the stick. Wow, that's amazing. So I want to say welcome home. You with DW, welcome home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's crazy. I remember, I remember, you know, coming up as a kid when I got exposed to DW, I always thought that they were like the Rolls Royce, like the top of the line. Although I started playing other brands coming up, you know what I'm saying? At church, all the churches had Pearl drum kit, you know what I'm saying? Or <laughs> yeah, Pearl, yeah, yeah. yeah, but then then we got a Yamaha. But I remember what I liked about DW, they would come out with these videos that would showcase all of the new gear that was coming out. Like they're one of the first people that companies that I saw that would do that. And what I liked about DW, they they had all these different swagged out colors that you know, you're just like me, we, we're fashion people, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. very important to, you know, to our look and our, our identity is just yeah. being able to look cool. Image is everything. And that's what I liked about DW. Um, and also with the Remo, I'm, 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 I'm with Remo newly since I think maybe two, a little over a year now. Um, and I, I played Remo as a kid, but I, I definitely, when I came back, I do, I did, re, I, I recognized that sound. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It was a very, familiar, very, sound, very familiar sound, familiar sound. I was like, okay, now nah, I'm, I'm back home too. But yeah, I'm, it, it was, that's a, a, lot of, a lot of good information that you, that you gave. Do um, you have any advice that you would give for like, say from like a beginning person and then to pro person that's looking to get a sound like what, what would you recommend you know for them on like sticks and and drums and, and and um gear period um experiment experiment with everything like like i got to the point where i'm at now to where i, I like what i like because i've experimented with so many different things and uh -huh. you know crashed and burned or like really like something's really really stuck uh -huh. uh, like even from like the heads that I use, I went through a variety of different heads, just trying to figure out like what sound I resonate with the most mm -hmm. for what situation too. Um, because for like in some certain instances, I use different drum heads for a different for a different vibe, just because it it, it creates a different sound for the drums. Um, same with cymbals. Sometimes I a lot of a lot of times I use like prototypes, like thinner, darker prototypes more trashy symbols but that isn't necessarily a sound that i can use for everything that i play with everybody mm -hmm. so me experimenting with brighter symbols heavier symbols and knowing what range on that soundscape that i would appreciate for that specific kind of thing gives me like an extra you know piece of dynamic for my playing when i if i have to play something a little bit more heavier uh, more rock influence and then same thing with uh with my with my drum sizes like sometimes i'll use like a you know eight inch time 10 inch time or sometimes i prefer to use a 12 and a 13 for you know bigger sound just because the the, mu the music's a little bit bigger um then i want a bigger sounding drum set mm. and then also like sometimes I, I prefer like doing gigs on a smaller kit versus like my normal you know 30 piece drum set uh just because it makes me makes me feel different it makes me think different you know if i'm mm. like Plan something more groove oriented. Like I don't necessarily need my whole, you know, you know, my whole double bass drum set to play a Dylan night or do a do a Slum Village night. You know what I'm saying? Speaking and, speaking of, not to cut you off, I remember seeing you playing with um, a musical person that I got introduced to, um, John Bap. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yo, like John Bap is another. I don't know if he's from Dallas, but he did he live in Dallas for a while? He's from yeah. He he lived in Dallas for a while. John is from. Uh, New York. Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo. Okay, yeah. So that was yeah. good afternoon. We got somebody that chimed in. David W. Seymour. They, they gave a shout. Mustafa, can you see the, the people I'm um, chiming yeah, in? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, what's up, man? France, hey, <laughs> Colombia. Oh, yeah, fire. 
That's what's up. Yo, man. so yeah, we were just speaking about John Bapp when you spoke about like playing that Dilla vibe. That was I was I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I forgot how I got introduced to John Bapp, but I, I didn't even know that you was playing on the stuff until later on because I just got a, I was like, but then when I found out it was you, I was like, yo, this dude is playing the Dilla and killing it. You know what I'm saying? It was so dope. <laughs> But it, it was, you know, shout out to John Bapp and another mutual homie, J.D. Beck. Yeah, J.D., yeah. So, yeah, I just want to shout out all, all of the, the, the cast from your area, man. Like, there's so many amazing. And it was good that you came up around that. I Similar when I came up, I grew up north. And, like, we were, like, watching Dana Davis and Michael Williams. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Those are our yeah. OGs. But I think your community that you're around, and I would say that I, I think an advantage that we had playing in a church setting I think that that really gave us some, I won't say an edge, but it just, it, 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 we, we had to just go. I think it definitely gave us an edge. Yeah. Definitely. Because we, so many things you have to have heightened sense of, you know, sensitivity to. Like as the drummer of a church, you have to like have like a, a, a clear understanding of like what your role is. And like you're the train for the whole church because you're controlling the swag for the band, you're controlling the swag for the choir director, which is controlling the choir, which you also have to watch the choir director because anything changes, you have to watch that. And you also still have to watch the MD. You also have to watch the pastor because he might come through and want to change up everything. <laughs> then also you're responsible for the, you know, to, to, from the 100 to 350, you know, 400 people that are in the crowd singing along to the songs, singing along to your beat. So like, it's a lot of heightened sensibilities that you have to have, like if you're going to, you know, add your personality to the music and, you know, try to rip, you know, because you want to be current and it also still make that, you know, make it feel really good. Yeah. There's a, lot, there's, a lot, there's a lot that you have to be paying attention to. And if you're able to pay attention to all of that and still have your personality show through your playing, through all of those layers, then like that's a, that's a really, that's really killer. Yeah, spot on. Yep. And everything what you said. And um, I'm just, just thinking too, like, even coming out of the church and we expanded and learning how to be a genre bending, which you are you're playing all different type of genres, just learning what to use for those settings. You know what I'm saying? And that's what's going to get you more work because if you go to like a, a rock gig, you know, and you're thinking that you want to bring all your fusion gear, you, you know, the, 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 the client, your boss, they, they looking for, they looking at all of that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because they don't want to, they don't want to be spending spending a lot of time trying to train you. Like you got to come to the gig train already, or yeah. the next man is taking your job. So having the gear and the right stuff, it really can either help or make or break your your success for that gig. Mm -hmm. So, um, Mike, I want to thank you for for, uh, for 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 taking our time with us. Um, Absolutely, man. I feel honored, man. Super, super, super honored. This is where this is where y'all can find you know find Mike, and also um. I want to let everybody know that's tuning in. You got a chance to wig some swag. If you want to put some swag. So we oh, gotta, we gotta... <laughs> Ooh, I need to see this. Jules, where my t shirt at, man? <laughs> I need this. Before, we, before, we, before we let you go, we want to give are there any questions that we want to give to um, Black Dynamite before he leaves? Any questions? Jules? Shout out to my co host, Jules Thomas. From, um, from DW. She's helping out on the co-hosting tip. Yep. Thank you, Jules. Appreciate it. Oh, you know what? I made my screen bigger, so I can't even see the questions on the side. Um, No questions. Cool. So, y'all, I want to thank my brother, Black Dynamite, Mr. Mike Mitchell, for coming on our show. Keep doing what you're doing, bro. I'm looking you, forward man. to us joining together and, and double, double. you know what I'm saying? Double drumming yeah, yeah. it up. I just play the I play the the, the 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 groove pockets and you can just whatever you want. I, I'm looking forward. Come to Come on, it. man. You know I'm down. I'm down. I'm down for anything. I'll just show up with a bottle of tequila and just play that, man. That's that'll be the thing. Woo! Yo, check out my brother though. He's doing big things and much love to you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep Thank inspiring you, the next generation because we need it. We need it during these times. And yep, I'm wishing you a good day, bro. We'll speak to you soon. Thank Have you, a good man. day. Yep. Appreciate you, man. Salute. All right. All love. Yo, cool. So that was my that was our brother Mike Mitchell. Um, he had a lot of good things, good pointers, and it was good that he that we was able to relate. You know, talking about you know playing in a church setting, I think gave us an advantage. Um, that's somebody trying to FaceTime me right now. <laughs> but y'all, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Mike has some really good pointers. Um, 
Yep. So without any further ado, I want to introduce our next guest. He's a legend. He's played with Michael Jackson, and I'm going to let him give his background. He's a good friend of mine. I'm thankful for our brotherhood. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only, Sugarfoot, Jonathan Moffat. Hi, everyone. Jonathan Sugarfoot Moffat here, and I'm enjoying this pleasure of being able to tag along and be on board of Daru's great program. I enjoyed Mike's stories and his advice on equipment and and to hear is an incredible story. He played with Stanley Clark at 17. That's, that's what I'm saying. My head was cracked too. I'm like, yo. I was like, oh my God. At 17, he did a blaze with the Stanley, man. That's an incredible achievement and um, and testimony to his playing and, and the work and time he put into uh, developing his craft. So it's, it's yes. a congratulations, Mike, as well as all the other wonderful things you mentioned that you accomplished. And, uh, and I love you talk about your setup. It's pretty amazing. Sounds like 30 drums. Whoa, he's topped me out. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo. That's a drum store right there. That's a drum shop right there. You know what I'm oh, that is a drum shop. And so, but <laughs> nah. <laughs> on stage. But you but you know what's really cool? You guys don't actually just have the gear, y'all actually use it. It's a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? They 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 have all the gear, but you don't never hear you don't never see them hit the stuff. So it's so cool, you know, Mikey uses it. And I, I just want to thank you for taking our time. I know you're a busy guy and like this is special having both of you guys and yourself because of all of the work that you've done, you know, for the community. You know what I'm saying? I, I felt like you would be great for this topic because I'm sure with all of the, the people that you work with, you have to learn how to get the right gear for it for those different settings. Before we get into that, for the people that's tuning in, can you give a little bit of background, a little bit of your background? Okay, well, I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana and uh, at the age of six years old, my father who worked at the main post office downtown. I had a friend whose sons and kids were into music. My father hadn't thought about it before. And then one day they were talking and he um, brought up the fact that music kept his kids out of trouble. So my father thought, wow, that's a great idea. Let me get my kids into music. Came home one afternoon, gathered me and my brother, my two um, older brothers and, and the kitchen and said, how would you guys like to play music? And we said, yeah, yeah, I love yeah, music. We knew music. But we didn't know nothing about really playing music. So he made us the offer. And then we said, yeah. So he said, well, each one of you pick an instrument you want to play. And I'll get your instrument at the World Lions Music Store downtown North Los Angeles. I mean, New Orleans. So uh, my oldest brother got first choice being the older. And he, had, he said, I want to play bass guitar. And I want to play also saxophone. So he got to experience both of those uh, instruments, uh, saxophone and, and clarinet first. And then he got a bass guitar later on and learned those. My second oldest brother, Adrian, he my oldest brother was named Oren, and uh, Adrian decided, I want to play guitar. And all the time they're making their choices. I'm sitting there, with I knew in my mind what I'm playing. I want to be able to play guitar, be out front like the other guys that were on TV and get all the action, get all the action, you know? So, <laughs> and that's why I said, I want to play guitar. My dad said, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Your two other brothers playing guitar, one on bass, one on guitar. We can't have all guitarists in the, co- in the, uh, in the family. So you got to play something different. The only other thing I knew was drums. So I said, all right, I'll play drums. So I got stuck with drums. <laughs> but oh, wow. I was stuck with drums. So I said, but okay, make the best of it. I said, I want to learn, I'll learn drums. But when I had my first private lessons with a teacher, uh, a neighborhood teacher that worked at the school that taught at night on Saturday nights at his home, and he started teaching me the independence of things you can challenge your mind to accomplish and that control your body. And that experience like made me say, whoa, wait a minute. It's a different thing and more more challenging and more um, enlightening thing when you can do all of these things independently. And it was on, mind you, it was only on the snare drum, marching snare drum. But I got to realize I can control my mind to control my hands and make them do what I want to do. It's a sense of power. It's a sense of self-control. It's a sense of education and and, uh, and growing your, your abilities. So I, I appreciated that. Something in me appreciated that. I said, wait a minute, I like drums. This is cool. When my brother was like mainly doing like this, and, but it was different. I was able to do all kind of different things on rhythms, and I, I got into that, and I wanted to learn more and more. And from uh, six, and then I was uh, only on the snare drum. And then our next birthday, I got a bass drum and a cymbal. I, so my kit was put together each birthday: bass drum and cymbal uh, on top. <laughs> and then I, so I had the snare drum, bass drum, and cymbal. And the next birthday, I got a hi hat and two times to go on top. The next birthday, I got a floor birthday. I got a floor time and another set of cymbals. By the time I was nine, I had the whole set. And, and mind you, mind you, each year 
having that single in addition to the kid. I got had a year to learn how to incorporate that them together for that that new element. Then the next year, the new element incorporate that to practice with that. But uh, I, so I didn't get a kid all together. It was pieced together by birthday, by his wow, birthday. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, and, and I had nobody to teach me how to incorporate those things. There was nobody in the neighborhood that played drum set to teach me. And so I only had lessons on the uh, marching snare drum for like nine months. The rest of it I had to figure out on my own, you know. And that's from my adoration and love for music and uh, developed, developed very quickly and strongly. And that's from taking that needle, picking it up, putting it back. Run to my drum set before it start, <laughs> and then try to catch up with it and learning. And say, oh, that's not right. That don't sound right. Get off the drums. Go back. Pick that needle up. Put it back. Try to find that spot. It's so much tedious work, but it was dedicated work because I felt all the time I can do this. I can get this, and I wanted to be accomplished at something and be accomplished at that because my passion for music. So by the time I was nine nine years old, I was playing uh, school dances, block parties, and, and things like that, talent shows. And then at 10 years old, my brothers, we had a band, we had formed with another neighborhood group of uh, musicians. And we started doing nightclubs. So I'm in nightclubs at 10 years old, <laughs> sneaking oh in the house, sneaking back in the world. <laughs> little boy, I was short for my age, a little boy with the big sticks, and they helped me carry the little drum set in. And I'd play a gig, and I, we'd go home and get home at 1.30, 2 in the morning. We had to get up for school at 5.30. So my parents thought it was okay, as long as my two brothers watched me and kept me away from the bar, from the, uh, bar drinking. And kept, and kept me away from the women. No, no, I was just kidding. <laughs> so he hmm. said, you know, nightclubs be dangerous and stuff. So they said, take care of your little brother. They did. And so um, I learned making money since 10 years old. I've been making money at music and drumming since 10 years old. Uh, and going up the ranks to all the local bands and, and that I worked with. And then in 79, um, yeah, middle of January, I decided to make a trip out here to search and seek for my star that I felt was was for me to do, because I was in my life, I felt drumming was what I was supposed to do and going to do, and I was delivered to do. And um, I loved it so much, I had a great passion, and I love moving people's spirits with my drumming. You know, you play a beat, you touch their soul without, I have, we are drummers, especially as drummers, all musicians have this uh, certain degree of it. As drummers though, we were given power. Drumming is power. Yes. I can take my drums and my physicality and mindset, spirit, soul, and I can play a, just a simple group, Billie Jean. And I can touch the furthest most person in the stadium and make them move their head, make them yes. pass their feet, make them dance. And mm -hmm. that's the power when you can reach inside somebody's soul mm -hmm. and grab it and, and <laughs> play like dance like a marionette, so to speak. But you can move people with the power of drumming. And, uh, just to, just to, not to cut you off, just to piggyback on that, that's part, what you're saying is 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 it? Um, I think it's very important the energy because it's, mm -hmm. anybody can get up and play that same twenty four, but it's how you live and the energy that comes out you. That's what's you know transferring to the people. Yes, would you yes, agree? I, I have yeah. I even take it a step further. You know what it is? Mm -hmm. It's the swing of the individual soul. Mm. When I play. I have a certain personal swing to my soul when I play, and I'm from because I'm from New Orleans. New Orleans drummers have a certain swing. People say, "How you get that New Orleans feel?" I said, "You have to go down there and live in the culture. There's nothing I can sit down and show you. You go live amongst the musicians, and as you fit in over that six months, year or so of time, you start to learn how to settle your feel, your style, your swing, and your approach and attack and finesse to what they're doing to match. Then you mm. become them." But it's a, it's a because New Orleans music is a culture, you know, um, and, and New Orleans drumming especially is a culture. It's like my buddy Zigaboo. He's, I was he's about a, to say Zigaboo. Woo, Zigaboo. He, he, he's, a, he's the measuring stick of that. Everybody, everything, everybody else, myself included, is measured to him. He's a measuring stick. He invented a lot of the syncopation and stuff. It was his voice and his language that I copied. And they used to call me little just, Zigaboo. Ones. Just to add to what you're saying, too, it, it wasn't. It was definitely what he was doing, but the sound, his sound, yes, you know what I'm saying? Yes. His sound was, they, a lot of people sampled that stuff in hip hop because yeah. of the drums that had certain sound. So whatever yeah. gear that he was using, I don't know if he, if he made an effort to be like, okay, these are the heads that I want to use because that's the topic that we're talking about, you know, yeah. and uh, everything that we're that we talking about goes towards the topic, but just that sound, like, I don't yeah. know how he was able to get that. So that's my tune in. It's definitely a tribute to to that to those guys 
like 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 the Jabo. You know, they had a certain thing, and I, the engineer. I know they played a part in how they mixed it to give it that thing. But it's funny you mentioned the New Orleans team because that's that's definitely that's definitely the thing. You know, what I'm saying like um, it's it's a it's a glitchy type of reggae type of swag, and, and it's 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 cool that you mentioned that. But yeah, I just wanted to add I just wanted to add that about Ziggable the sound and whatever he was using. And I know for you, um, as far as the gigs, because I, I want to get into when you got the gig, um, the, the, the gig with Michael Jackson. But I, I saw you play. I saw some videos of you playing even solo drumming. I'm like, man, you so diverse and versatile. I kind of want to know, like, I guess it makes sense that you were playing drums at 10, playing in clubs, because the way you play, you're playing like 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 a beat machine. Like it's. You know what I'm saying? Like it, to get that skill, I could tell that you've been listening to a lot of it because it came out. Like you know how to keep that pocket and make people dance, which is very important. But like working with Michael Jackson, even before that, when did you start making conscious decisions on the gear that you use, you know, to work for that stuff? If, if, if that's the question that you answered. Yes, uh, back in those days, as I mentioned, that was a piece together set. My first one. Then after that, for my um, my when I got that set together. I use that most of the years of my club days and uh, so many club days in New Orleans. And, they, and when I graduated from high school, my father gave me a new, new gift of a new drum set, a Rogers news model with a black, black and white oyster pearl. And it was like awesome for that time. That was a bomb with those uh, faucet like tightness on the top holders. But that was brand new technology back then. So I was elated. I had the top stuff. And uh, I picked it out. That's what I want, Dad. And he got it for my graduation. So that would be, have to, I would have to say, my first chance to choose a drum set because before my father would just go to the uh, the store in downtown new orleans and get the additional pieces much like like mike like that was like michael every, every piece every year he got none of it matched <laughs> I with the silver it was that dark dark blue with the silver spray look like spray can paint on the top from the bottom of the floor and <laughs> went around the band and then I got the the, the Martian snare drum was a, a Ludwig too, but it was it was mahogany, real nice mahogany with the a varnish on it, with uh, light up maple hoops. So that didn't match the bass drum because it was like. Too, so then he got the two times. Okay, my bass drum is like dark blue. My dad went to the or what he can, he got what he can afford. I love him for you know he bought what could advance my playing, but he did what he could afford. And he went down to the same music store, which was Worldline Music, which our favorite store we both bought all our stuff from. Then. He bought two times. I said, got two times. When he bought it home, it was Blue Sparkle. And <laughs> it was Blue Sparkle and it had the name Norma on it. I was like, Norma? I don't know what that was Norma. Norma drum. <laughs> RMA. What is that? And I was like, oh, man, I want to put some tape over the name and stuff. I didn't know who yeah. nobody, <laughs> nobody knew. But I left it on that, and I was happy to have one. Mounted on the bass drum. So I had that dark blue, the super band with Blue Sparkle <laughs> times. And then I had the, the mahogany snare drum, none of it matched. Then I got the another Marco Blue Floor time to match that drum, but it wasn't normal. It didn't even have a name on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it didn't even have a name on it. But I was playing my drum. That was my drum kit, and I was proud of it. I loved it. It got me through a lot of gigs and learning uh, in my schooling grooming days of the clubs down in New Orleans. That's your grooming time, you know, and you put in your homework at home. Then you go out and, and, and expose your assignment when you play the club because at home you're learning the songs you got to play for the next gig so that's your assignment homework and you do that you do that as best your ability i want to play exactly like the drummer on whatever song it was rock r b funk i want to become him that's yes. the whole of my mindset i got to become him to make this song sound like it sounds when i hear it on a record i have to become that i have to play yes. everything he executes but all not only that I have to become him because I have to play his feel, his swing, his touch, his style. So I I, I thought about it. all those elements mixed up what you hear. Like my one of my favorites is uh, David Garibaldi. I had to become David Ooh, Garibaldi. Power power? Power. You know him. And I had to become Zig. They call me little Zig. People start hearing me. They thought it was Zig. We thought it was Zig in here. But I can <laughs> his spirit, his soul, his swing, his style, his nuances of how how he laid certain sections back and he led certain leans lean certain sections forward mm -hmm. to make it you know, move and it's that motion his rhythm that motion yes. so Garboni is much the same that's my favorite style of stuff to play i play all the simple stuff uh, with the gigs that i do because it fits the record and it's what's supposed to be played because michael wants it just like the record 
but he allows me to indulge a little bit because he trusts my judgment because he know I have the discipline, you know, not to overplay in his music, you know. So and he gets that gains your respect when you do that. You reserve. You have you hear all these feels in your mind, your head. But I said no, it's not appropriate for the music. And plus, I want my gig. I don't want to lose my gig. So I don't. I refrain. And another thing I have to express, very important to, to people, you know, I love these guys. I had scientists, drummers are phenomenal, blowing my mind all the time. But I know, and I know they, they do it too. They, when it's time for the simple music, you have to use discipline and not do all of those things you, your instinct wants you to do. Because discipline, I don't hear many people saying this, but discipline is a power also. To, to, to have the power enough to refrain from what your instincts automatically want you to do, and you have power enough to not to hold that back and not do it. You know, so that's possible. Discipline is a power. you got to develop that power to, to work on the level that I work with, the big artists, you know, that I work with. Now they let the drummers play a little more free, but back in the 80s, 90s and stuff, I couldn't do all of that stuff. Somebody else had that. I'd be on the next plane going home, and there's some, somebody else flying in. You know, so... <laughs> and I oh said, my no, God. He's making my money. I got, that was my money. I lost it. Sure. <laughs> Yo, I was, it's funny you mentioned that I was when we me and Mike was talking. I was just saying, like, as drummers nowadays, you know, we gotta we have to make sure we have the right gear for the settings, or because there's so many drummers out there waiting to take your job. So yeah. it doesn't matter if you can play, but if you don't have the right gear that works for that setting, there's somebody else out there that's gonna come correct. So yeah. I'm just just kudos to MJ, rest in peace. You know, thank you for what you've done, you know, your spirit lives, and for you to get that gig. And I, what, what you were saying reminds me of myself because in my career, I feel like that's one of my things, making sure that I respect the, the original compositions. Mm -hmm. the producers, they put that stuff there for a reason. And I know when people come to concerts, they want to hear what they hold on the records. Mm -hmm. So just with that just with that mentality, and you're, D, you, you're DW too, right? I'm DW. I've been DW event since 1979. Wow. When they were really getting rid of that was me and Tommy Lee. Uh, Motley Crew, we came on the same time, and that's mm. when it was about to explode. And then uh, I was with Yamaha at the time from the, mm. most of the 80s. And John Good, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, John, the illustrious John Good, was my drum tech on the Victory Tour. Jackson what? Victory Tour in 84. He was my drum tech, and he still had the DW going since 72 with Don. But he was my <laughs> drum tech, recommended me to me by Freddie White from uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire, one of my, my best drummers I love. His, his style and his playing. I was a big fan of Freddie, and I called him up. I said, I don't have a drum tech. And he offered me his, because John was Freddie's drum tech through the oh years of Earth and Fire. Isn't that deep? That's deep, right? So he, That's John, very deep. he did uh, Victory Tour with me in 84. He did my first tour with Madonna at the Virgin Tour in 85. He did uh, Jermaine Jackson's tour, a Precious Moment tour in 86 with me. And he did the Who's That Girl tour by Madonna in 87. And at that point, after which John um, had gotten things together. He said, I really want to make this a serious company. He offered John to, to stop touring and get into the company, which he made the right decision. Because look at the company mm -hmm. now. So John told me I can't do the tour. I just got a call for Elton John in 88. Mm -hmm. And uh, John said, I, I want to do it so bad, but I can't. I'm sorry, you know, I can do the company now. It's a hard decision, but I, I have to stay with the company that John and I started. And I understood, of course, he recommended somebody. and. And that's what happened. And he went on to look at the company. He blew it up to, they both blew it up to uh, the, the top company in the industry. And and um, I, I, but I was still with Yamaha in '88 and '89. I did Elton John '88 and '89 hmm. on Yamaha. Then I got the call for Madonna's Blind Ambition tour, my third tour with her. And that's when during all this period of time since John was my tech, he's kept trying to convince me to come on and switch over and come on. I'm a, I was a good person, and all of a sudden I was stuck with Yamaha. Not like. I stuck with them because I was loyal to them. They, they treated me good and right. But at that point, they started, you know, it's some stuff in the business started getting a little funky, funky. So John said, don't worry about them. Come over to me, to us. So I said, I'll tell you what, I'll buy a kit. Because I didn't know, I never played a kit. So I wanted to find out if I'm my spirit and soul related to the tonality of it. So I bought a kit. He said, no, we'll give you a kit. I said, no, I want to buy a kit. Make sure I like it. Wow, that's powerful. They gave me a good deal on it, you know, but I still bought it at half price. But I, I said, I want to be sure that I was the soul of the kit. Every kid's got a soul. Mm -hmm. And the soul of my soul match. And we can talk. And we relate. And we become, can become one when mm -hmm. we work together, when we speak together. And I speak through it. So uh, it's basically a translator of what my soul is saying. So I said, I want to live with it for six months. And I'll make a decision. 
man, I start playing that kid every day and stuff. And then gradually my ear got retuned from the sound of Yamaha's because they have a character and a voice. Yes. So retuning over that six month period, which is what I wanted to do. Retune to the sound of DWs. And at that point, I called John up and said, let's do this deal. I love these drums. <laughs> So that's how I got on board, and uh, he, he then of course he had, at that time he had immediately make a, a set for me for the Blind Ambition tour, my first kit. Then he made a set for me for George Michael in uh, '91, then for Jerry Jackson in '93, '94, and then Michael in the History tour '96, '97. And so and then I got the the kits for This Is It, and I mean so I've been with DW for what 30 years, 30 what is it, what would that be 31 years. Wow, you came you came in the game at a good time though, because all that music that was made was just classic. You know what I'm saying? Like, not to cut you off, it's like, no, it's okay. just, but just the, what 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 what's fascinating me is just you being able to, because some of that stuff didn't always have live drums, or I, I don't want to get it wrong. I think some of the stuff was put, was was um, programmed. Program. But yeah, but you as a drummer, like you was able to still play it, like you know, like. Like you was like the beat machine, which is a very, very impressive. And and that's I believe that's why. So what hearing your story reminds me of myself, and I'm still a baby in this game, but the same thing. Like when I get jobs, I always try to make sure that I learn the records like the records. And it, it, if there's a specific sound, but just just to add to, you know, you've been with DW because obviously, you know, when you start, you know, growing up in Besides that, you know, your dad, you have to, he, you know, you got different pieces. But then when you started playing other brands, you made a conscious um, effort. You know, you took out time, you bought the kit, you studied. Because you were right, like, each company, they do have, like, the brands that you're talking about, Yamaha, they have a Pacific sound. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I loved and it. Loved it. Same, same here. I was, I was, but I, 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 you know, when I got turned on to DW, one of the things that I liked about them, because I'm a fashionable guy, like, coming up in hip hop, you know, world. It's all about fashion, and I just thought that they had the coolest looking shelves. You know what I'm saying? And like they was they was really you know in, innovative. But it's cool that you made a conscious effort to start like finding out which drums were gonna be like your sound. You know what I'm saying? And 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 I'm I'm, I'm glad I'm I'm with DW because I feel like they were at the top. And um yeah, those those that's crazy that you got to work with those people that you did, and it's such a blessing. And and like you're definitely one of the biggest catalysts. Um, I want to also give thanks to everybody that's been showing love and tuning in. Thank you guys for the love. And um, so, 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 John, do you have any? You got a question? Can you put that up one more time, Jules? What was I just that? want to say hi to all the fans out there. We love you. We Daru, Daru, I, Mike, love you guys, and thanks for supporting us on this broadcast. Thank you. We love. Yes. You. Do we have any questions that that anybody want to want to tune in, Jules? Any questions? Can you see that, um, Jonathan? Can you see the question? Yeah, I use cable. On the question is, hey, but can you please tell me why you use a cable on cable hat on a mobile tour? I didn't have a cable hat on the mobile tour. <laughs> I, I, I just had that one hi hat. I was going to use extra hi hats, but but the production eighty six that they say it's too much stuff. You got thirty five pieces up there already. What you want to do? I had another one. <laughs> you taking up all our channels. <laughs> like 35, like it was 35 pieces and i want to put another extra remote hi-hat so Ooh. they was they was trying to stop me from putting the three bass drum but that's that, you know when they wasn't looking i stuck the other one in and they said the next day they said where did it come from i thought we said i said leave it there and then i just you know put some mojo power on them and they said okay <laughs> so they were trying to cut me back so i didn't have a remote hat as i'm trying to say um oh, a table hat i just used the one hat hi-hat and the bass drum, say this next question, Lindsay said, "What size bass drum do I like?" I use uh, 24 for my main uh, bass drum. 24 by 22 is my main sound because it's got enough natural low end, and that you don't have to add a lot of EQ. I love the tightness of the 22. The 20s uh, don't give me enough low end, uh, but the, I like the tightness of it for the articulation because I use a lot of fast figures and uh, and voicings. And uh, but the 24, I could still do those fast figures, but it gives me that that, that um, bent the rest of the figures on. So that's my main bass drum now. In my setup still, I've started using, the, I use what I call the, the triple threat. It's three bass drums, <laughs> triple threat. And it's the 22 by 20, a 24 by 22, and a 26 by 24. And it goes across in, uh, in scales because, uh, and then I have my, my, my big set, the Hydra. The Hydra is five bass drums. 
and it's a it's a 20 inch and then it's a 22 24 26 and 28 by 26. so um that's basically to, to give you orientation as to why some i get messages sometimes about why you need all in bass drums why you why you uh, you, you only need one bass drum no i'm like you were talking about with, with mike is i want to be an innovator in sound and i want to i want to grow drumming to a more yes. of an art everybody teases us with the jokes about it. he's only a drummer he's not a musician no uh, we are musicians first mm -hmm. of all because we have tones in our times we got tones when we, i use multiple snares tones between snares piccolo in the main snare then now you got tones in your cymbals we're like a keyboard player that we play them individually like that in, in a com composition of our rhythms and of the things we're trying to say and relate. So we are musicians, but even to take that further, I decided at some point that to have, because I was, as a kid like you, I grew up in church. I didn't play in church, but my mm. father would take us upstairs to the balcony. And um, there was a key organist, B3 organist up there with like a big Leslie and stuff. And I heard that sound and other than drums, that is the sound of life to wow. me. When you have a B3 organ, life, the whole world inside and outside opens up the tone of that organ. Mm -hmm. The sound that organs can make with the right, behind the right hands. Yes. It's, yes. It matched, it's unmatched. So I was yes. always inspired by B3 organ. I would go up there as a little boy, four, five years old, and lay on my, in my little suit on the floor and lay by the Leslie and watch this guy who was really proficient. And he'd be playing on the organs to pull out the drum bars and stuff. But mm. what blew me away was he's doing all of that while he's going his bass player uh, foot is going on the bass pedals. That's my my pops. And I was like, yes. oh, as a little kid, I was fascinated. So, oh, I did, how we do that? How we do that? Then mm -hmm. I he hit the Leslie's and it started going whirling, man. And that sound is like life. And yes. so I was fascinated with that. The image stuck and the sound stuck in my mind all the years. And then in 88, I'm on tour with uh, Elton John, and I'm in over in De Randers, Den Denmark, recording the Sleeping with the Pass album I did with him. And it was in the middle of the night, about two in the morning. I said, you know what? I want a drum set that, will, that can replicate what that guy does on his foot pedal on the beat your organ. So I drew it out. I'm an, also an artist. I started, wow. drawing. I started drawing before I was drumming. I started drawing at four, and then drawing all the Marvel comic books from four, uh, from six on up to now. Um, all the, the comic book, I can draw that stuff. So I drew it all out that night because I couldn't sleep. And then I had it done for D, I was with D drum electronic drums and I had, I did a clinic with it. And where your foot is dividing the foot pattern up into melodic phrases. So the bass drum pattern can go, you know, uh, on one bass drum, but now on my, my, my uh, triple set, I can go, boom, da. Wow. I can do rhythms and melodies. I'm playing songs on my bass drum alone between the time is on the snare and the hat. So I'm, I'm trying to broaden the scope of drumming to the effect that, you know, there's some other drummers have three bass drums. They don't use it like this, but some of them have more but they don't use it in this concept. And it was inbred in me from watching that B3 organist play the bass patterns, the bass notes. Wow. I, my father asked me when I would play, I want to play bass guitar. And I was denied because I was the youngest. I had the third choice. My brother had got that. So the love of bass stayed in my soul and my spirit. I figured out a way to become a bass player. <laughs> These are all the bass drums, you know, and play bass notes on that. Not only did you get the pitch, because they all have pitch, I tune them, they have a skill. Do, 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 on the bass drum now. They usually do it on times. Uh -huh. so now what happens when I do that with the five bass drum? Yeah, I have used, I use 16 cymbals. So I have pitches, scales of pitches in place, personal placement around me, upper level and scale on, around me on the mid, uh, uh, middle level. Then I got scales of pitches on the times. Now I have scales of pitches on the bass drums. So uh -huh. I have been uh -huh. to open up the musicality of drumming to the greatest degree, a greater degree, with you know, on all drums, that I can act literally play a song and make people dance to just me and, and without anybody else. So I'm like, you know what, I, I, I've had this vision. I want to broaden the importance of a drummer being a musician. Yes. Not be joked on, like, all he do is play beats and drums. So I thought that was important to do because drums are fascinating instruments. And it can be more 
than what they say we are and they tease tease we are you know um so anyway I, my, my vision being a creative person and all the elements of creativity god has raised me with i i saw that and i felt that you know by the desperation of uh, that bass drum beat beats real on his foot playing them pedals and fascinated how can he control all of that and, and know what to hit first and second and last you know uh, that fascinated me and i, I applied it to drumming now so that's my element now that I can do those things either with three bass drums. I can play all day long on one bass drum, of course. <laughs> I hear melodies in my head all the time. I'm a songwriter and producer too. So yeah, that's why I, I, I was gonna ask that I was gonna ask that question too. Cause you're a composer. And by me being a producer too, that's definitely helped the decisions that I'm making when I'm playing. Because yes, as yeah. you know, you know, I always tell people like there's a thousand things that you can do, but it's only a few things that's gonna work for the song. You know yes. what I'm saying? Because you wanna be a team player. And enhance the record, and you gotta you gotta understand that it's not only you playing; it's other people, and y'all sure. all can't talk at the same time. It's a conversation. Yeah. So, by me being a producer and composer, I can tell that that's your mentality because you're thinking of feels that's going to enhance that part. It may be the simplest thing, but yeah. it's elementary, but it works. It works, so that's very commendable. I love your story when you, when you spoke about um. How about one more? Okay. I, I like I I I, I liked um we spoke about the, the Hammond because my mom and dad they're both musicians that's what they played like my dad he, he passed away with the piece but yeah and you talked you spoke about the the playing the pedals yes spoke, my dad was all about that life you know um I think we got time maybe for one more question but that was a very beautiful story you you cracked my head like I like just your concept of just being creative and I think it's very important as drummers when we find the gear we don't have to just do like the standard It's all type of things that we can do to expand and take drums to another level with yeah, the sticks yeah. adding more drums and tuning mm -hmm. terry bozio is a great example and, and yes. sugar Fruit is a great example of that and one of the things that i want to talk about before we get to this question that we're going to close out um you're sitting behind the electronic drum kit now yes. i recently saw you playing because you you posted a video and i was just like oh my god like you was just as funky on an electronic kit <laughs> you know, all the acoustic kids. So, do you have any, any advice even for that? Like, 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 it's like, what type of pat? Like, what, like, what, what type of drum kit was that? The electronic it's, kit was. That? I'm I'm endorsed by Roland. Uh, this is uh, the V30. V30. Uh, right? It's an older model, but it's it was the Highland at the time, and mm -hmm. uh, it's still extraordinary. I don't care if they come with the other V80 or whatever, but it's still this kit, and all the ones down the line are great, incredible kits. There's always going to be advancements in technology on a bass guitar, guitar, keyboards, and drums, and stuff like that. But I get great gratification out of this, even though I'm about to get the newest model. So I don't want to cut that out. <laughs> so, but I've had this kit for some number of years. And the, the key to it is they got great sounds and sound banks already in the, in the before you create anything, already in the module. So mm -hmm. I, that was all those you heard me play with stock sounds as far as kits. I didn't exchange any out, out. I didn't import no, my own sounds yet. I'm going to be doing all that later on, but this is the stock kit of the, the V30, and I have I dialed in great sounds for all them. I did several uh, videos on this kit, but the key is having a tool like this. Electronics feel, I mean, drums feel different from acoustic, of course, absolutely 100% different. But the key and common denominator is your spirit and your soul. So you grow your soul, you grow your spirit through the years of learning and practicing and playing. You develop your voice, you develop your sound by the elements of drums and a, a number of drum kits you incorporate in your kit. But the main thing beyond all of that, you, you can have all the equipment in the world, but you don't have the, the, the broad vocabulary of spiritual voice to, to express uh, more than one word, one sentence, or one line, one rhythm, uh, or you got to learn how to, to grow your soul and how to multiplex uh, communicating um, rhythmic voice patterns. So how to combine different rhythms, how to syncopate it, how to stop and leave. Because silence is a note too. So a lot of my playing, I'd stop and I, I know you do that too. Yes. I, I, we're grooving it, I'll just stop and there's a, a voice of silence that's deadening. Then next time you hear it, it's, oh, that is that dynamic. So um, I use silence and then play notes not played as a rhythm. So as well. So I uh, let them have their moment in, in within the, the complexity of the rhythm or simplicity of the rhythm. I let them have their moment because I use those silent points as notes that it, that creates the whole body embodiment of the rhythm I'm playing. So, but I like and I like to leave them very clean. Nothing hanging over. I stop. You don't hear it, die, nothing. 
a dime, like to stop on a dime. And that's important. You got to learn how to fine tune your spirituality to be able to control it in the, in the most instant moment. To have total control. So those are growing things. You have to spend time with yourself and with your instrument. That you and your instrument can become one. It's yes. one voice. With two pieces. The drums is a voice. I'm a voice. But when I spend a lot of time with it, we we come and merge with just one voice together. And it's my translators of my soul. And wow, I love all of that. That was really good insight. Totally, it's really cool. Like I, I, it's it's inspiring. And I'm thankful that we that we was able to get this brotherhood. You know, what I'm saying just to. From one of my heroes like yourself to to you know like what i'm doing is just is 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 humbling but it's just cool just knowing that i'm on a, i'm on the right path i feel like because from what you're saying like it's just wow you're stepping out on faith because you know sometimes there's a trend going on and i was just, was just want to encourage drummers like we all you know there's, there's, there's many lanes you know what i'm saying don't let nobody shame you if you decide you want to go out down this certain lane because i know when trends came out I didn't. I, I didn't like following trends. I just I found what I liked and I stuck with it. And one of the things that I liked was hip hop. So it was yeah. more about playing pocket type of stuff, and I stuck with it, regardless of what was around me. Now sometimes I would go into them jam sessions, and I would be feel a little, a little intimidated because everybody's going for blood. But mm -hmm. but I, I think if, by me sticking with my lane, it's 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 it's, it's allowed me to, you know, get to where I'm at today. Now I'm, people are appreciating like like yourself and like what I'm like they appreciate what we're doing. And they can really be like, okay, like that makes sense. This is why I'm dancing. This is why I'm feeling a certain way because of the spirit. Um, and a lot of a lot of great things said. I think we have time for one more question. But can I mention one more? I forgot. I forgot to mention the other elements of my setup when we talk about mm -hmm. how cooking and stuff. I, I'm like you with Remo. I've been with Remo since 1980, no, 1979. Mm -hmm. When I got second tour with the Jacksons, so you know we've been family since 1979. And I've been using and I use I've tried all the different heads and stuff, but I always go back to the coded and masters. Why? Because most of the greatest records in the industry has been recorded with the you know, coded ambassadors. And wow. so if they work if they work great and make hit records live, I can I rather use the same thing that just in case they're recording, I'm gonna have the same incredible sound live with an artist and of the with the coded ambassadors. Now I've been using also recently, uh comes on the drums, John Goods designed um, with the with the uh, coach pinstripes on on the sides edges of them it's a custom design by john good remo makes them wow. that's their head their personal head I, I so i've been with remo a long time um i'm with earthwork microphones that's my mics of choice and i've been with them for several years now and they're incredible and uh, incredible mics and translators of our, our performances and our sound and i really uh, enjoy their mics because it translates with the right frequencies the right voices what i'm trying to translate to the audience but so it's just my personal choice everybody got their personal choice and right now in, um, i'm developing my own drumstick and going to come out with my own drumstick line not fit with anybody's company if you know, my moffitt brand of drumstick right. designing several models and they're in, in works now and i'll get the prototypes tonight right now and then i'm um, designing i am in between symbol companies so i don't I have an endorsement yet been with many of them different times i'm designing my own symbol line as i'm trying to say and get a manufacturer to to uh, make them for me so i'll be coming up my own stick my own symbol line my own snare drums i got uh, designed being an artist like i mentioned since six years old and died designing i uh and i design all my kits the big kits you see i draw them out before we build them so i draw them wow. front back side side overhead to make sure it's totally like the drawing so every time you see one of the big kits that the racks and stuff, I design all of that stuff. Personally, wow, that's a vision. A lot, that's of, a vision. lot of the finishes on my kits too. But I'm coming out with my own line of products and snare drum, custom snare drums, you know, um, and um, different things that I'm going to introduce that under the Moffitt brand. So um, a lot of things in the works. Wow. Well, I definitely want to want to give the most praise and shout out to you, brother. You've been a great example for all of us. You know what I'm saying? That know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? Like your, your 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 diversity, you know the gigs that you've had, just your brand and getting a certain gear to work for different environments, and even with the electronic kit, you're still playing it with your personality. So it's yeah. just like your knowledge, what you gave is golden. So we we, we appreciate it. Um, yeah. really, so much. really fortunate and blessed for the journey that I've been able to be uh, to be on for the last 41 years, a professional since I started with the Jackson Brothers in in the spring of. 79. I'm really blessed and grateful to God. 
and uh, who's my manager and uh, I'm like, the Jesus Christ who's my agent and if you read my resume that's why I read the way it does because I had no real earthly manager and um, it's, it's a testimony my resume is a testimony to the glory and the work that they, they can do in your life you know, and uh, and provide for you so I've always been grounded within that faith and my abilities come from there from, from them and I, I'm grandly appreciative of being able to do what I love to do. It's so wonderful. And uh, the greatest gratification of life that I spent my time doing what I love to do. And I suggest that everybody search out what your, your first love is in your life and career to do and pursue that because that's what you're meant to do. You will excel at it. Yeah, totally. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that all day. <laughs> I'm with you on all, all day. And I didn't even get, we didn't even get a chance to talk about the, the showmanship, but you know, same same school you know watching you you got the different tricks and things that you do and um that's that that is all a part of the package you know it's all a part of the package and i'm thankful for you being a great example of showing us how to be a complete drummer and how to you know be versatile and play the you know in the pop world still make it funky still look cool you know what i'm saying and, and, and not totally so sell your soul you know what i'm saying you still have your identity and you like you one of the best examples that i can think of so I want to thank you for what you've done and coming on the show today. Jules, do we, do we have time for a question or do we want to close out? Do any of you have exercise or routines you do before playing the show to get into character? You want to start you want first or you want to go first? You want to go first or you want me to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. Um, that's a good question. Put it up there one more time so I can read it off, Jules. Do either Cam, Cam, um, Cam Slash? Cam Hash. Exercise, exercise the routine that you do before playing a show to get into character for the show. Exercise of some sort. Yeah, I think for me is a lot of times nowadays, I long for the days of being able to practice and have a long sound, um, you know, like a press before the show. But a lot of times my rehearsal to get prep is, is that sound check. Sound check, you know what I'm saying? That's when I can kind of, you know, warm up, you know, and get loose before the show. <laughs> And that's my practice, that sound check for the most part. And my yeah. routines are just playing, depending on the show or the artist, I'm playing their songs or material so I can already be loosened up. You know, I'm not doing a bunch of fills. It depends if I'm doing a fusion gig, that's different. But otherwise, I'm just playing the music, that, the, the, the patterns of the show that I'm going to be doing for the night. So that's how I warm up. What about yourself, um, um, John? Well, for me, I have a different, a different approach. Before every show, I don't care what artist it is. I don't know what, I don't care what songs it is that I've taken on the play. I, my approach is like, is this? Nothing. <laughs> I do nothing. <laughs> Man, I've, been playing before. I've been playing for how many, 56 years. If I don't have it, they're turning on the light switch on the play and be good, I, should, I better do something else. I don't need to have a practice pad backstage. I don't need to have a drum kit backstage before the show to warm up, so to speak, or do that stuff. And it's okay for those who feel that, you know. But mm -hmm. to me, first, it's my personal opinion not to criticize anyone. My personal opinion is I don't need, I, I feel as those are crutches that mm -hmm. if I play well, oh, I didn't warm up. Mm -hmm. Oh, if I, I should have played something on a practice pad, I will not limber enough. I don't want excuses. I either play really good and proud of what I played. I played jacked up and I'm embarrassed. I'm gonna go hide somewhere. So I, I <laughs> it's a, to me, it's a mindset. I make it a mindset. Mm. When the curtain opens the first light, and it says showtime, and the lights go down and dark. Something in my mind turns. I, the switch turns on, and I get in that like I did at the rehearsal, a professional mode, and I'm serious about it. I'm focused, you know, and I'm determined to do the best for Michael as possible, as humanly possible. Best for Madonna, best for Elton, and. It's like my personal show. I look at it like that. Each of those artists in their shows. This is my show. In my position, this is my show. Mm. They're doing this show. They're the artists. But in this, my position as drummers, this is my show. And I want to get out here and play and kill them. I want to help Elton kill them. I want to help Michael kill them. I want them to, to, to have the greatest show that they can have because they feed up for me. And my energy is it's super mega intense. And I'm going to drive them. I'm going to push this music to its limit. I'm going to be as sharp and, and, and articulate in my playing that to make them feel it. So I don't need, I don't want to have a crush there. I, I need a kit backstage. 
it's just a bunch of more stuff to haul around that the, the truckers hate me, hate me for. So I said, you know what? Out of me, I've been a professional. I turned in when it's Sam. They say, showtime. I'm ready. Let's go. I don't touch sticks. I don't touch sticks until wow. I get on the show time on the stage or on, on my snare drum on the stage. I walk up to the horizon. I sit down. Everything is right. I pick up the sticks, and the first sound that happens on the show happens, and I'm in. And I have the it's a mentality, you know. Um, wow. I don't. I prefer not to have a crutch that I have to warm up before. Now I will do some martial arts stretches, you know, leg stretches, you know, bring my leg up and just to do the limber. And that does, that's not all the time. But my arms, I do arm stretches. Martial. My friend of mine is a martial artist. Show me a few body stretches to get limber. You know, I do those kind of things. There's, a, there's only a few of them, like five or six of them, like that. I'm ready. I can feel where I am limber wise. And so mm -hmm. there's a lot of times I don't do that, even do that. I say, okay, mm -hmm. showtime, let's go. <laughs> let's go. That's all this is. Oh, that, that's me thinking, beautiful. Me thinking, oh. saying, let's go, that's the switch turned on. My mind switched on. You got to do that. Let's go. That switch is on. I'm ready to go. I know it. I practiced it for two months already. Why well, don't know it? Why, why, why am I nervous? Why am I? <laughs> I the rehearsal, I walked out there knowing it. Now, just because people in the audience, why all of a sudden I'm not sure of myself. Mm. Mind control, spirit control uh, that you have to practice and develop and, and be sure about yourself and be sure about what you're playing or about to play. Yeah, before you leave that last rehearsal, you got to be sure you got it. Because the next one is not a rehearsal, it's a real show. So I you know, carry that forward from show, from show to show to show, to that same mindset. Don't give me no sticks, don't give me no drum backstage. I don't even touch them right now. I'm ready to save my energy for the stage. Wow. I'm about to give it all. I'm about to give it all. I, I, I like that. that. I, learned, I learned so much. That's so cool. And it's just like you being there in real time. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah. like it's like driving a car. You don't know what you want to get when you're on the road, but you got to be there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Really that. Yeah. Wow. That's very inspiring. <laughs> you got to develop it to that point. But you have total confidence in yourself and your abilities. And I'm a master of what I do when I'm on my high my drum set. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. Let's go. That's that's faith. That's faith. And that reminds me, and I know we gotta go, but um that's my approach when I'm doing the studio sessions. Like I don't wanna hear the track before I get in the studio. People they send you the tracks like you can do nine days. I'm like, I don't even want to play it until I until until the record is on, because I feel like those first ideas will come to my mind when I'm hearing it. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the vibe. That's what's going to make, make it unique. But yeah, if I yeah. hear it and, and have a preconceived, then I'm going to automatically know, okay, this is a rock thing. This is what I'm going to play. So yeah. I just, when I'm in the studio, I don't want to even hit a track before I even get, I want to be there and do it in real time. So that's, man, what you just said is like, wow, wow. But Jonathan, I want to thank you so much for taking our time to come on the show. Thank, thank everybody for tuning in and all the questions. And again, we're going to be giving away some swag um, oh yeah. Also, you can find Jonathan Sugarfoot Moffitt's website. Information is at the bottom. And when you get those sticks and all the new stuff, you gotta you gotta see you. I want I would love to check that stuff out. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll, hook we'll hook it up, my friend. We'll yes, sir. Up. But yeah, yeah, I wanna I wanna, I wanna thank much young to all my bad, incredible young brothers out there that were just blazing. You're blowing me away. I love what you do, and and you're setting new trends and style of playing and approaches and techniques and you know, all the young guys that that that's so younger than when I say young guys are younger than me and everybody on earth is younger than me. But anyway, I'm just kidding. But I, all those guys, I, I love you all and I'm behind you 100. Thanks for being the new voices of drumming and exploratory in drumming. We appreciate you. Thanks so much, and I hope you have a beautiful rest of the day. And um, yeah, you you the wisdom that you just shared it really. It's going to resonate with a lot of us, you know. what I'm saying I, I learned something new today, you know. I'm thankful for what you what you shared, and you know we, we appreciate your 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 spirit, your gift, and what all that you gave to the industry. Thankful that you you know you live a legend. Keep doing what you do. Keep inspiring us all. And I'm wishing you and your fiance a beautiful days to come. Much love, Sugarfoot. Appreciate you, brother. Brotherly love to you, my friend. I want to see you soon. Hope you can get together, see you soon, hang out, spend some time, and and love to you, Jules, and and um, all DW staff and. and People, Don and John and Garrison and Scott, uh, love you all. And you guys take care. Have a wonderful day and wonderful week. Thanks, Jonathan. Speak to you soon, brother. All right now. Take care. Take care. Yo. Woo. 
we could have went longer. Like if the, <laughs> Jonathan has so much wisdom and so much insight, but thank I want to thank both of my guests, Mike Mitchell, Black Dynamite, and Jonathan Sugar for Mafia for coming on the show. Big thanks to Jules, my co-host. Also want a big um, thanks um, to Five Spy Brother Todd for being um, generous and allowing me to come do my show at this venue. As, as y'all notice, every month I try to, you know, showcase a different different place, but I want to come here because I know during a pandemic, a lot of the, the small business, they've been closing up because, you know, they don't, they're not able to, you know, sell drinks or whatever they was doing to, you know, so let's do it all. We, whatever we can do to keep these, these places open, let's do what we got to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, I don't know if, if if the five spot needed like a GoFundMe program or something to keep them open, but I'm glad that they're still open. They're still doing their thing. And, you know, um, but yeah, let's, 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 let's love one another. You know what I'm saying? And, um, let's, we got some, we got some news. So we, so we know where, where America is, is heading. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. And want to thank all y'all for tuning in. And I, I just want to, my last thing that I'm going to play, this is one of the most important beats you can ever play in your life. And it's, it's a, it's a tribute to my brother, Sugarfoot. I've actually saw him do this, you know, playing with Michael Jackson. And this particular beat, you can if you can play this beat at any tempo and play it well, you're going to get a lot of work. And I'm going to close out on that note. Thank you, guys. God bless. I'm going to play this, this beat. videos where Jonathan is playing that beat while Michael Jackson is just dancing and that's to be from beat it I mean from um Billie Jean he just playing that that lock pocket and Michael Jackson is getting busy so if y'all can learn how to play that and play it well different dynamics but just play you know play it strong you're going to get work my name is Daru Jones salute PDPDW much love peace